Hey there nation, welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with the episode of Cheap Shots. This is episode number 32, and on this episode of Cheap Shots, we're going to show you how to cheaply and quickly up paint up some Death Guard for Warhammer 40,000. Specifically, we're going to show you exactly how we went about painting the Noxious Brightbringer, as you can see right here in the center of the photo. We'll be using this miniature to paint with, but the techniques that we use in order to paint this miniature very quickly and cheaply can be applied to any Death Guard unit. In fact, if you look at the Plague Marines that are around this character, uh, they were painted with exactly the same technique. And at the same time, we're going to show you how to paint these guys very, very quickly. It took about a couple hours worth of time to work on this, um, of actual paint time. And uh, also at the same time, save you over $117 in the process of doing so. So that being said, let's go ahead and get this video on a roll and talk about exactly how we can paint quickly and cheaply paint up some Death Guard. All right, so the first thing we do, of course, is Prime. And the nice thing about uh, Death Guard, as well with any Space Marine type of figure, actually, it uh, doesn't matter if you're playing Chaos Space Marines or if you're playing um, Loyalist Space Marines. The nice thing about them is that they all have a very mo a very monotone color scheme. They usually have one primary color that the entire miniature is primarily covered in. And, of course, once you figure out that color is, you can just spray that color that color onto most of the miniatures and just pick up the individual details. In this case, for the Death Guard, I'm going with kind of like this all of drab green look that the plague marines are rocking for most death guard armies and the nice part about that is most of the armor for death guard units are exactly that same color so you can actually get a lot of the work done with just some base spraying in this case i'd suggest you use rustoleum's camouflage two times ultra cover spray paint and then especially in the olive drab color is what you use and that's exactly what we use we did the exact entirety of the model sprayed it down exactly the same way as you would a primer and covered the entire model with that rustoleum gray uh, with that rustoleum olive drab color the nice part about that is actually Actually, it does most of the work for you and actually takes care of pretty much almost all the armor panels and actually quite a bit of the armor panel is actually done all you have to do at this point now is just pick out some details and do the metallics and you can move on really quickly so this is the stuff I recommend I got this at the local Walmart for three dollars ninety nine cents just do a really nice simple base kit with this and you're ready to move on all right, so the next step for September 2 is a heavy dry brush using Lime Sherbet by Apple Barrel Paint. Uh, this stuff will run you about 50 cents per tube at your local Walmart. And once again, like I said, just do a quick heavy dry brush all over the entirety of the miniature. Uh, the reason why I would recommend doing the entirety of the miniature is because you don't need to particularly be too neat at this point. You just bring out all the details. Plus, by dry brushing this, you actually see a lot of the details on the miniature because the olive drab paint kind of flattens the image down a little bit on the uh, actual miniature. So this helps kind of brings out the three-dimensionality as well as the race surfaces. At the same time, the Lion Shimmer also does exactly the same thing by adding highlights to the armor panels are going to be olive drab color. Uh, Death Guard have this wonderfully beautiful olive drab color from their armor, and that's exactly the same color of the skin that we use. So it's very, very quick. Just do a really heavy dry brush of Lime Sherbert all over the miniature, the armor of uh, the miniature, all over the miniature. Now, it is going to give it this very pastel kind of chalky look, but do not stress about that because when we get to the uh, step where we do an oil wash, that's going to flatten that out and get rid of it. So just do a really quick heavy dry brush with some Lime Sherbert, and you're ready to move on. All right, so step number three is another base coat. This time we're working on the tabard that the Noxious Blightbringer is actually wearing. He has like this kind of tabard going over his torso. And so for that, we decided to use Concord Grape by Apple Barrel Paint. Uh, use two thin coats of this stuff to go over it. The reason why you need to use two coats is because while the Concord Grape is a darker color, um, that Lime Sherbet is quite of a strong color and it will you know show through the first coat so that's why you want to put two thin coats of this stuff all over it uh the tabard only covers the really front part of the body so just adding some color to add some distinction to it so do two thin coats of that and you're ready to move on from there and of course, once you're done with that, the next thing you do is do a light dry brush with some lilac mist by Apple Barrel Paint over the tab bar that you just painted in Carcord Purple. It's going to bring up the folds of the fabric really nicely, as well as add some three-dimensionality to the image, add to the miniature, as well as add, catching some of the highlights on it as well. It also adds, leaves the darker color to the recesses of it, so it does a really nice job about that. Like I said, for the most part, for the rest of this, you're just doing a little bit of detail, so most of the, uh, most of the time you're just alternating between dry brushing as well as base coating for all the details for this part. So once you're done with the tab bar, you're ready to move on to the rest of the miniature. 
So the next part I decided to focus on, of course, was a little nurgling that hangs off of the horn on the backpack of the power pack of the uh, Noxious Blightbringer. And I decided to paint that nurgling a bright blue color. And the reason why is because, well, a lot of traditional nurglings are green. I felt that if I left it that same green color, it just kind of blend in with the miniature, the rest of the miniature. And I wanted this little guy to kind of stick out distinctively. So because of that, what I did is I painted this guy with bright blue by Apple Barrel Paint. This is an old tube of this stuff that I actually have, but uh, you can see it's all cracking, the label is. It's a pretty old too, uh, too, but it, you know, it does the trick. Uh, cost 50 cents to your local Walmart, just do two thin coats of this all over the nurgling and ready to move on to the next step, which is a dry brush. All right, so for the next part of the horse is to do the dry brushing on the little nurgling guy. So because of this, I use Sky Blue by Apple Barrel Paint. Just do a quick dry brush all over the entirety of the nurgling. It brings out a lot of the recesses. Yes, it's gonna make it look kind of chalky and pastel like we mentioned before, but that's gonna be fine because when we get to the oil washing stage, that's gonna take care of that for the most part. And whether you're aware of it or not, you're actually done for actually the majority of the miniature. Now it's just working on the very minute detail portions of the miniature. And we're gonna start doing that by working on all the bone areas on this guy, first of all. All right, so the next part we did, of course, is base coat all the parts that are going to be bone on this miniature. I use Khaki by Apple Barrel Paints, a nice bone color. Uh, cost 50 cents. Put two thin coats over all the parts that are going to be exposed. So these are things like the tusks that are growing out of the shoulders of the miniature as well as in the backpack that's holding the bell. You also can focus a little bit on the horn of the nurgling as well as his teeth. And basically, you has got to look around the miniature, look for anything that are from bone protrusions, and when you find them, just do two thin coats of Khaki uh, paint on top of that. You will not need to worry about dry brushing it too much just because because I find that the uh, quick paint method that we use using the oil wash with the khaki does a good enough job by itself, so you don't need to really worry about highlighting or dry brushing it. Just two thin coats of khaki gets the job done as far as I'm concerned. All right, the next color we use next for step number eight is another base coat using two layers of bright magenta by Apple Barrel. And these are for all the fleshy abundance that's kind of seeping through the plates. The nice thing about these Plague Marines is that they have a lot of detail within the Death Guard, especially since the re-release of the 8th edition of Warhammer Fantasy Battle. The uh, Plague Marines and the Death Guard just have really awesome details. And a lot of it is like this kind of creepy, kind of morbidy, you know, fleshy parts that are sticking out between their plates. They have like hose that run over their bodies that look like, you know, intestinal tubes. they got growths coming out of their armor and slipping out of their armor panel, things of that nature. So whatever parts that I'm going to be painting up it did look like flesh i use bright magenta by apple barrel paint do thin two thin coats so you can see that i got some coming out of the club foot coming out of the armor there on his left leg as well as the tubing around his neck and his arm i also picked up some of the pustules that's on the little nurgling as well just to add some more growths upon the guy it looks really really awesome as well so just do two thin coats some bright magenta and you're ready to move on to the next page so now that we got the fleshy parts all base coat, the next thing we need to do, of course, is a dry brush. And this time I use Cameo Pink by Apple Barrel. It's a nice kind of candy pink that's got a very pastel color to it. Just do a quick dry brush and real quick, just real simple. Just go over the parts that you painted in magenta, give it a nice little three-dimensional uh, dry brushing with a Cameo Pink. Like I said before, it does cast the highlight while leaving the light magenta into the deeper recesses of the miniature. Adds some three-dimensionality to it as well. Also brings out some details on it, so it looks really awesome. Now for step number 10, of course, we'll do another base coat. This time we're using winter green. And these are for all like the different things like cabling and tubes and hose that run all over the miniature as well. I said I picked those out with winter green. Winter green's a nice minty kind of green color. It looks really nice, especially when you add the oil wash to it. So really catches the eye on that one. So things like the cabling that's around the neck of the uh, Noxus Brightbringer, as well as the plasma pistols he's carrying, as well as the cabling from that. He's also got some cables running from his power pack on his back, as well as the eyes, a little nurgling. Just picked out those details real quick in two thin coats of winter green. And this looks really really awesome as well. Now for step number 11, this is going to from primarily feature on the back of the miniature for the most part, uh, especially for this Noxus Brightbringer. What we're going to do is, of course, we're going to do all the armor joints is what we're going to do. So because of that, this miniature does have a few armor joints. They're primarily looking along the hip as well as the uh, the thigh area as well as in the back of the legs. So you only really see those portions on the back of the miniature. So because I did a 180 real quick so that we can see the back, and all I did real quick is just do two thin coats of pavement on that is all I really did to make it look like those were some black armor joints. There are not very many armor joints on Plague Marine which is actually kind of nice so you don't really have to worry about getting you know too worked up on getting that detail done but since it was on this guy I decided to add it at the same time you can also see a little bit more of the pink details that we've done on the back there as well because a lot more of the flesh on this guy is uh, popping out of the back of the miniature all right, so one of the last pieces of detail work that we use, of course, is that the miniature is actually riven with a bunch of rust holes and like openings all over its armor, like it's been shot at or it's caught or rotted away, or whatever the case may be. So the color I use to pick out those detail is Coral Shell. It's made by Americana. It's another acrylic paint. It's made by Deco Art. You can find that at your local Hobby Lobby for 65 cents. What I do is I just take a little 
dollop of this stuff on the tip of my brush and just kind of poke it right, stipple it right into the middle of the holes on the art panel. So for example, if you look at the Noxious Brightbringer, he's got a couple of holes on his face mask, so I can just pick those details out, as well as in his armor panels on his arms, as well as his legs. Wherever little dimplets like that show up all over the armor, I just kind of add that coral shell color as well. And what it does, it kind of creates this, like this weird kind of pustule look when you add the oil wash to it as well. So it looks really, really awesome as well. I use this quite a bit on my um, Plague Bearers, as well as my uh, Demon of Nurgle, from Demon Prince of Nurgle that I worked on in earlier videos. So because of that, I liked using that effect quite a bit, and that's exactly what I use for those little small details as well. And then once you're done with that coral shell, it's time to move on to the metallics of the miniature. So now we're ready to work on the metallics in the miniature because pretty much almost all the details done. The only thing we need to do now is the metallic portion. So the very first color we start off with is number 13 is with copper by Folk Art. It's a nice copperish color and there's actually quite a lot of copper on this miniature. Primarily, uh, you have these incense burners or hang off its body with chains. You also have a lot of bells off this miniature as well as the, the large bell on the backpack. It's carrying one in its hand. The little Nurgle is carrying one as well. Bells are hanging off of the horns and stuff. So all those portions of the armor that are kind of like the metallic part that looks like that, the bell and the charms and things. I basically put two thin coats of copper by folk art onto those portions so that way it looks like a, you know, kind of like this bronzy kind of coppery look as well. So the next stuff I decided to use next is to do a wash real quick, and that's for all of the uh, weathering effects and adding all the copper pieces that we just did. So what I use is that most of the time people from Citadel or from Games Workshop recommend using my and I like Oxide. It's a great product, does a really good job, but the product I like to use is New Amsterdam's Sky Blue Light Ink. You can get this stuff at Hobby Lobby. It costs seven bucks, so it is a little bit more expensive than your Nile like Oxide, but you get a ton of it as well. You will never run out of Sky Blue Light uh, as far as long as you live. It's got like a nice turquoise color does exactly the same thing as Nihilac Oxide does. So all I do of course is take a little drop of it from the eyedropper, drop it inside my palette, and just put it into the recesses for all the bells. So if you see all those bells have these little rivets and holes and rust effects all over the place. Same thing with the incense burners that the uh, Noxious Brightblinger is also carrying as well. You don't need to be particularly uh, pretty neat about it either. You just kind of sloppily add it to the holes real quick to make it look like they're filled up with some oxide in there. Add some color variation to the copper as well and also makes it look more weathered and beaten up and does a really great job. So that's what I use for my weathering effect on that one. All right, the next part we need to work on, of course, are all the parts are going to be silver on the miniature. So there's actually quite a bit of silver pieces. Uh, I decided to use Gunmetal Gray by Folk Art. I did two base coats of this stuff. So I did it on the entirety of the plasma pistol. And then the thing I mainly concentrated on primarily were the chains. This guy has a lot of chains hanging off of his body where those incense burners are located. So I just kind of did two thin coats of this all over the chains, over the plasma pistol. Same thing with the hook that attached the bell to the top of that torn tusk thing as well as the three nails that are driven through it there on the top as well. Just do two thin coats of that silver, uh, that gunmetal gray on all the parts are going to be silver as well. It's a nice dark gunmetal silver so it looks really really good when it's all said and done. All right, so now that we're done with all the silver pieces, the next thing you do, of course, is a dry brush to make a rusted look because, you, know, you know, Death Guard units are very sloppy. They're also very ru rusty and kind of weathered and beaten. Now, most people would suggest that you'd use Rise of Rust by uh, Games Workshop by uh, Citadel. That runs you $4.55. However, if you just have a tube of orange, any kind of orange, really, I use Harvest Orange by Apple Barrel for this effect. Uh, it does exactly the same thing because all you need to do is take your orange and just dry brush it is all you need to do. Take all the silver parts that were silver and just do a light dry brushing with the orange paint to get that kind of oxide rusted look. Uh, go as dark or as heavy as you want with the dry brushing to your liking. So as you can see, I mainly focus on the back here because the chains are hanging off of this character. I wanted to show that image a lot better because, you know, I just put a light dusting of orange effect on the uh, pistol while the rest of the chains were where most of the rust effect was going to take place at. So you can see that I just did a pretty heavy orange dry brushing on the silver. It makes the silver chains look kind of rusty and ragged at the same time, look kind of, you know, mean. So it looks really, really nice when that effect is over with. And finally, the last effect that you need to do, of course, is another base coat, this time with all the gold portions of the miniature. I use two thin layers of pure gold by Folk Art, runs you 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. And these are things that like the score work along the shoulder pads of the pauldrons of the uh, miniature, as well as the iron halo that goes over the top of its head. I also did the respirator that's in the middle of his chest, uh, the muzzle of the plasma gun. I also did it to the backpack. He's got like this little uh, drum on the top of his power pack, as well as little any charms. He's got a lot of little fly icons and Nurgle icons all of the miniatures, so all those things that are in gold, I just kind of picked out two thin layers of gold, and that pretty much does the job for it. And whether you're aware of it or not, you're actually all done with the miniature. You've done all the base coating, as well as all the dry brushing. Now it's time to move on to an oil wash. 
All right, so step number 18 as well as step number 19 has to deal with the oil wash. In this case, since this is a quick paint method, uh, most people would recommend that you would use Army Painter Strong Tone in order to wash the entire miniature with an oil wash. Oil Army Painter uh, Strong Tone is a great product. You know, I used in the past before when I was just starting out into gaming. Uh, it's a really good product, but it's super expensive. It runs about $32 a can. Well, a can of Midwax Poly Shades uh, Mission Oak will do exactly the same thing, and all it costs is like $6.99, I think is what it costs. Uh, that's the most expensive can I found. So because of that, it's a fraction of the price, and it does exactly the same thing. So all you need to do, of course, just shake up your poly shade, take an old paintbrush, dip it into the poly shades, and then apply it to your miniature like a wash. I would not recommend you actually dipping the miniature into the poly shade because that's how you waste a lot of the poly shade. Uh, it's just easier just to apply it like a giant wash and just go all over the miniature. It's really, really simple to do. And as you can see here, after this whole process is done, it does a lot of things. First of all, it darkens the miniature down quite a bit. So all those bright pastel looking colors that we had on the miniature are now extremely muted. They're actually darkened now because they're being stained by the the uh, Mission Oak color inside of it. So it is a really nice part of dapping those colors down. At the same time, it also took the pastel look of the miniature and flattened the colors. And also the oil is also re-seeped re into the recesses of the miniature, bringing out a lot of the details. And as you can see, it looks like this nice grimy kind of darkened color, it muted the color, but at the same time, be very, very bright at the same time. And it does a wonderful job bringing all the detail work on it. And of course, what you need to do after you get done oil washing it is let it dry. I recommend waiting 24 hours to let it dry. And the only reason why I would recommend that is because it is a mixture of polyurethane and stain so the stain does do the darkening but the polyurethane does take some time to cure and you also want to wait 24 hours too because if you handle this miniature while it's still sticky and let's say you actually you know some of it sticks to your fingers when you're handling it you could actually rub off the paint off of the miniature and then you know it just really screws up the finish on your miniature the reason why i know this is because i have made that mistake so my suggestion to you is like if you paint in the evenings or whatever paint one day do your oil wash to the last step for that day wait 24 hours and pick up the next day and then you're ready to move on. All right, for step number 20, we're gonna do a matte varnish spray on this one. This one is, of course, an optional step. If you like that shiny, uh, candy-coated look on your miniatures, you, of course, skip this stage. Me, personally, though, I don't like that. I like to have a more matted finish on mine, so because I just spray it with some Cryolon matte finish, i just do it once over real quick to flatten it down. As you can see, by doing that, you can see all that beautiful detail work that the oil wash has done now. It seeps into all the recesses. It's also blended all the colors together, and just looks really awesome. Makes it look like you're a really highly tinted painter, a really talented painter, when you just kind of just kind of blaze through real quick so that stuff cannot swear by that stuff enough it just looks really awesome when it's all said and done so now that we're done spraying the miniature down with the map bars the next thing you do now is start working on the base so the base on this miniature, I basically just covered half of it with sand and wood glue and water mixture. I've already talked about it in the base. For the part that are just textured, I just use pavement by Apple Barrel. It's a really, really, really dark gray. Just do two thin coats of that directly onto the entirety of the base. So that way it covers up the sand granules to make it look like it's like an ashen dark earth. I want to have my the death, my death guard looks like they walk across like a blasted wasteland with some boggy, you know, sickly oozy stuff that they're walking through as well. And that's exactly the kind of the base that I wanted to look like. I wanted to look like my... Uh, other 40 of uh, my other uh, Legion Nurgle army bases. I really like that look, so I decided to apply it to my Death Guard, and that's exactly what you need to do for this one. So, once that pavement paint is dry, you're ready to move on to the dry brushing. So to help with the blasted wasteland look, what I decided to do is dry brush the textured paint now with a uh, thin layer of burnt sienna by Folk Art. That runs about 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. Just take that paint and just do a quick dry brush over the black pavement. As you can see, it kind of creates this ashen, burned wasteland type of landscape that your character is walking on. And it looks really, really awesome. It looks really, really cool at the same time. And the next step after that, of course, is to make the bog effect. So like the other half of the base is kind of like this blank base that I use for uh, the rest of the, the to make it look like it's walking through like a toxic oozy bog and the perfect color to use for that is Kiwi by Apple Barrel Paint or runs 50 cents for a tube just put two thin coats of that and just be kind of rough with it when you paint it just add it to the areas that are gonna be you know the bog and also don't feel bad about you know laying over some of it, the color into the part that you dry brushed with the uh, with the um Oh, what you call it with the burnt sienna because it looks like the bog just kind of seeps over the shores and stuff plus at the metro we're going to make our homemade rod effect to put over on the top of that to make it look like this really oozy slimy surface and it's going to look really awesome when it's all said and done all right so the next step is to add a homemade rod effect a slime effect and my perfect mixture of doing this 
is a one-to-one -one mixture of uh, emid wax polyacrylic clear gloss protective finish what it is it has like, this crystal clear shiny gloss effect that adds to your stuff it's perfect for using for slime effects as well as like using it for like hard coat and things of that nature it's a beautiful beautiful product you can get a ton of this stuff half a pint for less than seven bucks and you just mix in equal parts of that with some um, olive ink by Amsterdam uh, which is the same product we use for the, uh, the the rust effect on the copper just mix it one-to-one -one ratio and you got this beautiful beautiful green slime that's basically just like Nurgle's rod except you can make tons of this stuff and not have to break the bank doing it at the same time so that's exactly what I did just add that rod effect all over the base to make it look like an oozy boggy mess and finally, of course, the very last step we need to do now is, of course, rim the base. In this case, I decided to use Burnt Sienna by Folk Art. Just do two thin layers of this stuff around the rim of the base. And when you look at it now, it looks pretty much done. And pretty much this miniature is finished and ready to go and to bring some rot and ruin to the Warhammer 40,000 universe and to, you know, spread plague and destruction in the name of Nurgle. And of course, that takes us really back to the very beginning of the episode with the final result. And as you can see here, this guy looks absolutely amazing, especially when you have this squad of tag marines around him, especially to bring some rotten ruin exactly to the uh, blast wastes of Kill Team. I plan on using this guy for our Kill Team campaign that we're working on as well. And as you can see, the technique that we used to paint up this Noxious Blightbringer was exactly the same technique we used for all of the plague marines in this unit. So it's a very, very cost effective and very easy and fast way of planting up some plague marines really, really quickly. So now that we're done showing you exactly what we use for our cheapskate method now it's time to talk about the price point on this we're going to show you two methods the first method we're going to show you is you showing the products that citadel as well as army painter would recommend for you to use in order to paint this up using their materials and then we're going to show you the total of that cost and then we're going to show you the cheapskate method we just explained and show you what the price would be and the amount of money you would save by doing it the cheapskate method so that being said let's go and get the shopping lists on a roll all right, so first of all, for Citadel Army Painter Method, first of all, you'll need to buy a can of Death Guard Green Spray, which costs $19.50 from the Games Workshop website. You'll then need to dry brush the entire miniature down with Hellion Green, as it costs you $4.55. For the Tabard, paint it with Gene Stealer Purple, which runs you $4.55, and then dry brush it with the Kala Lilac, which also runs you $4.55. From there, you'll need to paint the Nurgling with Teclas Blue, as well as dry brush it with Blue Horror. Both of those products, of course, cost $4.55. For all the bone, you'll need to buy a tub of more gas bone, which cost you four dollars 55 cents for that one for all the fleshy bits as well as the tubing around the miniature you would use screamer pink and then dry brush it with fulgrim pink both of those cost you four dollars and 55 cents as well for all the tubing as well as the eyes and nurgling as well as the cabling around the la uh, the uh, plasma pistol you need to buy gauss blaster green which runs you four dollars 55 cents and for the base for you to start working on the base you need to buy eschen gray for the base as well as for the armor joints and that costs you four dollars 55 cents as well now for the rotted pity look that we had for the green armor you will need to buy a tub of luganeth orange which will be four dollars fifty five cents for that effect and for all the parts we did in metallic uh, copper color you'll need to buy a tub of screaming bell which runs you seven dollars eighty cents with that to add the rusted effects you'll need to buy a tub of nylac -like oxide which runs you four dollars fifty five cents for that and for all the parts that are going to be silver you'll need to buy lead belcher which runs you seven dollars eighty cents and then dry brush it with rise of rust which also costs you another four dollars fifty five cents for that now for all the parts that are going to be gold of course you use retributor armor which runs you seven dollars eighty cents and of course to do the quick paint method you'll need to buy a can of army painter strong tone or drunk you another $32 to do the oil wash now once the oil drosh is done and dry and you want to you know cure let it cure the next thing you want to do of course is use varnish you'll need to use minotorium varnish which is a matte varnish sold by games workshop which will be $19.50 now for the base, for the part that's going to be the slimy bog, you'll need to use Moot Green, which runs you $4.55 for a tub of that. And then, of course, to get that slime effect, you'll need to buy a tub of Nurgle's Rot, which runs you $4.55 as well. Now, assuming you need to purchase all of these materials all at one time in order to do this method, you're talking about a grand total investment of $162.65 in order to paint up this, uh, these, this miniature with the uh, method that is used by Games Workshop as well as Army Painter. Now let's go and talk about the cheapskate method real quick. First of all, you need to buy a can of Estonian Camouflage Olive Green, which runs you $3.99 to do the priming, as well as a base spring from armor panels. Next, you need a dry brush of Lime Sherbet, and then do the Tabard and Concord Grape. You'll need a dry brush that tarbard and lilac mist you'll need to paint the lurgling in bright blue then dry brush with sky blue you'll need to pick up the bone materials in khaki as well as all the parts are going to be flesh and light magenta and then of course dry brush with cameo pink and then what you'll need to do of course is work on the tubing as well as the plasma pistol with wintergreen 
and of course work on the armor joint which is apple barrels pavement paint and all of those paints i just listed are all made by apple barrel uh, apple barrel and they're all costing 50 cents in order to use all those materials the only thing is you got to go to your local walmart in order to do that now for all the parts that we did for the pitted ruined effect on the green armor panels we used uh americana's coral shell which runs at 65 cents for that now for the metallics for the uh, parts are going to be copper we're going to use folk art copper which runs at 75 cents as well as using new amsterdam sky blue light ink for the weathered effect on those we're going to do $5.99 for that next you also need to buy a tube of gunmetal gray by folk art to do all the silver parts and then you'll need to dry brush those with apple barrels harvest orange paint which runs at 50 cents as well to create that kind of rusted silver effect on your miniature and of course the last thing you need to do of course is pick up the parts that could be gold on your miniature you'll need to buy a tube of folk art pure gold or just 75 cents as well now, doing the quick paint method, you will need to buy a can of Midwax Poly Shade Mission Oak, which is a combination of stain and polyurethane, which runs you $6.99 for that can. And of course, once you're letting it done drying and cure, you'll need to spray with some Krylon Matte Varnish Spray, which is $5.99 for that can as well. Now, for the boggy mess on the bottom of the ground, you'll need to buy a can, a jar, not a jar, sorry, a tube of Apple Barrel Kiwi, which will be 50 cents for that. And of course, you'll need to apply some homemade rot effect. You'll need to buy a can of Midwax Polycrylic Clear Gloss. For one is six dollars ninety nine cents, and then also a jar of New Amsterdam Olive Green Light Ink, which will be five dollars ninety nine cents. Mix that in a one to one ratio, and then base your miniature. Now, assuming that you don't have these materials on hand, you actually had to go buy and buy all these things on this cheap cake method. We're talking about a total investment of forty four dollars and eighty four cents. So, when you take the forty four dollars and eighty four cents that would cost you to paint you with the cheap skate method, and you subtract it from the one hundred sixty dollars and sixty five cents of the Citadel Army Painter method, we're cracking about a grand total savings of one hundred seventeen dollars and 81 cents being saved by doing things the cheapskate method and at the same time getting a beautiful tabletop standard to work on your miniatures as well so that's gonna do it for this one you guys for episode number 32 out of paying some death guard as always please feel free to like comment and or subscribe you guys input is invaluable to us as always also check us out on facebook instagram as well as blogger.com for all the latest greatest uh, hobby news related to our channel that's gonna do it for this one you guys you guys stay safe out there don't let papa nurgle get you with the covid19 be safe stay locked in practice safe distancing and you guys stay classy we'll catch you guys next one peace out you guys